Welcome. My name is David Lepofsky. I'm the chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. Welcome to our first ever virtual press conference. We are sitting in the Inclusive Design Resource Research Centre at the Ontario College of Art and Design University in Toronto. This is a world centre of expertise on accessible information technology for people with disabilities. That's an important place from which to do our first virtual news conference. Today, we want to take this opportunity to unveil the election promises which the three major parties in the Ontario Legislature have made to us on what they would do if elected to make Ontario fully accessible to over 1.8 million Ontarians who have a physical or mental or sensory or learning or intellectual disability. Our coalition has existed since 2005. Before us, our predecessor coalition, the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee, existed from 1994 uh, and two uh, all the way up to 2005. Together, our movement over the past two decades has fought tenaciously in a nonpartisan way to try to get Ontario to become fully accessible to all people with disabilities. This is the sixth Ontario election in which our movement has taken part where we've asked the political parties to make specific election commitments where the parties or at least some of them have made commitments and where they are expressed in letters to us. Let me just explain a resource that will be available as I'm speaking. As I'm speaking, if you go to the website www.aodaalliance.org, that's www.aodaalliance.org, you can and go to the What's New page, you'll be able to see all the information that supports and backs the statements I will be making today, including the election commitments of the three parties, the commitments we sought from the three parties, an analysis of them, or a comparison of them, the background or records of the parties in this area over the past 20 or 25 years, and the entire saga of our effort in a nonpartisan way to campaign for fully full accessibility. After this virtual press conference is wrapped up, we're available for an interview. We're happy to have you contact us and we can speak to you either in person or over the phone. Just send us an email. Send an email to aodafeedback at gmail.com. That's aodafeedback at gmail.com. And we would be happy, just as if you were here at a live press conference, to answer any questions you may have. So what's the problem? Imagine going to school to see your child or your grandchild in a school play. But you can't get into the building, or if you can get in, you can't get into the room where the school play is taking place because there are either steps to the front door or steps to go to the room where the play is being presented. Imagine that you go to a restaurant for a meal, but the restaurant won't let you sit at any free table that's available because you're a deaf and you're accompanied by a hearing ear dog and they want to direct you to what part of the restaurant they consider it's acceptable for you and your dog uh, to be in. Imagine uh, going to exercise your democratic vote in an election. What could be more fundamental for any citizen? Only to find that you can't mark the ballot on your own because it's a paper ballot and you are either blind, as I am, or have dyslexia, and there is no voting option available in your local polling station for you to be able to mark your own ballot. You have to ask somebody else to mark it for you and hope they get it right, and hope they don't tell anyone how you voted, and hope they don't spoil the ballot by accident. Imagine that Elections Ontario came up with a fancy new uh, accessible voting machine, but there's only one or two per riding. You go to use it and sometimes 
it doesn't work. Imagine that your government, your provincial government, decided to spend a fortune to develop a new Presto smart card so that you could pay your public transit fare, not using the old technology, reaching in your pocket and taking out a token, but using a smart card. But you find out that the government designed it in a way that's not fully accessible to people who can't read printed information on a screen. If you want to check your balance at a transit station, you can't read the screen on the card reader, you're out of luck. And imagine the government did that with your tax dollars after saying that they'd make sure it would be accessible and even though there's readily available technology to make it accessible. All of these things have happened and do happen in our province. The people with disabilities face far too many barriers when they try to get a job or go to school, or ride public transit, or simply go shopping. Some of those barriers are physical barriers, some of those barriers are technological barriers, some of them are information barriers, some of them are legal barriers, some of them are just silly bureaucratic barriers. All of these barriers are illegal. They violate the Charter of Rights, or the Human Rights Code, or both. But the problem that people with disabilities found back in the 90s is that even though they're illegal, too often these old barriers remain and new barriers popped up. This led a small group of people with disabilities back in 1994 to form a coalition which grew into a very large coalition called the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee. And it fought for a decade to win the enactment of a new law the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act, or AODA. After that decade-long tenacious campaign, the legislature unanimously passed that law on May 10th, 2005, just a little over nine years ago uh, this month. And it passed unanimously with a standing ovation from all sides of the House, something that's not too commonly seen at Queen's Park. Our problem is that this law was a good law, but it's not being effectively implemented. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act requires Ontario to become fully accessible by 2025, 20 years after it was enacted. And it requires the Ontario government to lead our province to that goal and to get us there on time. How is the province supposed to do that? Well, the provincial government isn't expected to tear down every single barrier that may exist in the public or private sector. Now, the way the Act is designed, the government is responsible to develop individual rules for different sectors of the economy called accessibility standards. And these are supposed to tell organizations what barriers they have to remove and when they got to remove them by. Not a one-size-fits-all solution, no, it's, it's intended that Large organizations will have to do more and sooner. Public sector organizations will have to do more than the private sector sometimes and, and sooner. It's not a one-size-fits-all uh, uh, solution at all. The provincial government has two responsibilities. They have to develop all the accessibility standards we need to ensure that we reach full accessibility by 2025. And the province is required to effectively enforce those standards so we're sure that everyone is, is complying with them. The problem is, we're not on schedule for full accessibility by 2025. You can ask any person with a disability, and we're in touch with lots of them as a community grassroots nonpartisan coalition. We're finding that some progress has been made, but it's not being made quickly enough. And as quickly as old barriers are being torn down, we're too often finding new barriers popping up, like that Presto Smart Card I mentioned before. This has led our coalition, the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance, formed in 2005 to get this law effectively enforced. This has led us to be active in, uh, in, uh, in elections and between elections. Our goal is not to get any particular party elected or defeated or to get any can particular candidate elected or defeated. Uh, no, our goal is to ensure 
uh, that we get this law effectively implemented by trying to get the strongest commitments out of each party and then to try to hold their feet to the fire to ensure that they, they keep those commitments. Well, this being our sixth election, we got ready a couple of months ago. When word was out that we could have a spring election, we wrote the three major political parties in the legislature back on the 3rd of March, uh, 2014, to list uh, ni uh, 19 commitments that we were looking for in eight general areas. And we gave them enough heads up so that they'd be able to formulate their responses uh, in time for the election. And it's just over the past couple of days that we've gotten responses from those three parties. Both our March 3rd letter requesting their commitments and their responses are all available, as I said, at www.aodaalliance.org on our What's New page. So what commitments did we seek? Well, first, we asked each party to commit that they would strengthen the implementation of the Disabilities Act, since we're behind schedule, and that they won't weaken it in any way. We wanted to be sure that anything we've gained on the accessibility agenda up till now will not be endangered or cut back. That's the first thing we asked for. Second, we asked uh, each party to commit to specific measures to ensure that the accessibility standards that the government already has enacted are effectively enforced. Third, we were aware that while there are a number of helpful standards on the books to address barriers in some aspect parts of society, we knew that, we, that they're not enough to cover the whole waterfront. Even if those standards were obeyed to the letter, we would still not reach full accessibility by 2025 or ever. We need new accessibility standards. We identified three we need immediately. In fact, we've been pushing for these three for at least three years to address barriers in fundamental areas of human life of, 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 uh, in our society. Education, healthcare, and residential housing. We asked for commitments on those three and commitments to, de to, to develop the rest of the standards we need to ensure we get to that goal of 2025 and we get there on time. Next, we asked the parties to each commit that they would not use public money ever to create new barriers against us to make things worse. Fifth, we asked the parties to commit to take effective action to tear down the barriers we face as voters with disabilities when we try to vote. And one of the important areas that we've been advocating for is the option of telephone and internet voting because through adaptive technology, many of us who can't mark our own ballot if it's in paper could do so either using the phone or a computer. Next. Our sixth area where we sought commitments is to reform the way the Ontario government, the Ontario Public Service, develops, uh, delivers accessibility. The Ontario Public Service is the biggest employer and the biggest service provider in this province. And it's got to clean up its own act. It's made some improvements, but there's still lots of problems. And the government doesn't have an effective way in place right now to ensure that it delivers accessible services and that its workplaces become fully barrier free. Seventh, we asked all parties in 2007 to commit, and they did, that if elected they would review all Ontario laws and root out to, it, to find accessibility barriers that are rooted in the law. Well, the government made that commitment and it's 2014, seven years later, and we're nowhere near having that completed, that review of legislation, and we want to get that sped up. And finally, we asked the parties to each commit that they would work cooperatively with our coalition, meet with us, uh, and be open to discuss with us uh, how to implement these measures and others so that we're sure we get to our goal. Well, so how did we do? This is the first part of our important message today. First part is, what did, what did the parties commit? And the second part is, what are we going to do about it? Well, the good news is all three parties did write us a letter and each did make commitments on accessibility. That isn't always the case. There's always been, since 1995, at least two parties have made commitments to us in writing, but um, it was only in 95 and in 2007 that all three parties uh, 
did. Uh, now I can say that in 2014 all three parties did. However, getting past that and looking at the contents of what we are uh, offered, uh, there's, there's some helpful contents, there's no question, but they're clearly not good enough. Let me summarize. The New Democratic Party clearly makes more commitments and stronger commitments in its totality uh, than did either of the other parties. In the middle comes the Liberal Party that has had the most experience in this area because they, they designed this legislation and they've been in power since it was enacted uh, responsible for implementing it. The Liberal Party made some helpful uh, 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 commitments, but far less than we need, and certainly not enough to get us to full accessibility by 2025, uh, or ever. And uh, clearly in third place are, is the Progressive Conservative Party, uh, which made uh, uh, very general um, commitments, mostly statements of intention, uh, but didn't make uh, uh, the kinds of commitments uh, that we need. Let me now turn to specifics of what each of them uh, had to offer. First, in the area of not cutting back on gains we've made, the New Democrats, they said that explicitly. The Liberals didn't. But back in December 3rd, 2012, when she was running for leadership of her party, Premier Wynne said she'd keep all prior commitments made by the Liberal Party to us. And we did get a promise in the 2011 election that they wouldn't cut gains we've made. We'll hold them to that. Um, it is troubling to us that the Progressive Conservative Party, for a second election in a row, has declined to make a commitment not to cut the uh, gains we've made. Back in 2011, we asked uh, all the parties for this, and uh, Mr. Hudak, leading the Progressive Conservatives, would not make that commitment, though uh, when asked on the media, or on, uh, uh, when appearing on TV, he made some partial or limited commitments, and we have links to those on our website, uh, but not as far as we'd like them to go. And similarly in this election, while we've got good statements of intention in the letter we received from the Progressive Conservative Party about their commitment to accessibility and and to the legislation. Uh, we don't have a commitment that, uh, that our regulations that we've won or the gains we have made uh, won't be cut back or might not be on the chopping block. Um, and that is a matter of very serious concern. On the area of enforcement of the legislation, the New Democrats promise um, strong enforcement. They don't provide a lot of detail, uh, the kind of detail we're seeking. The Liberals, they're kind of an interesting story. The Liberals have been promising effective enforcement since back in the 2003 election, and yet their performance has not lived up to the promise. Last November, we made public the fact that the government knew from its own records that fully 70% of private sector organizations with, with over uh, with 20 or more employees were not in uh, uh, private sector organizations, were in violation of the Disabilities Act, uh, and the government at that point had not conducted a single inspection or a single audit, issued a single compliance order, or even levied a dime in monetary penalties. Now, since they got all that bad press, they've tried to get 2,500 of the 36,000 organizations that are non-compliance uh, to clean up their act. They got a long way to go. The liberals uh, promised to, increase, to work to increase the private sector compliance, but they don't say by how much. They say public sector organizations are 99% compliant, and they'll bring that up to 100%. It's not a huge change that's going to make a difference in, in our lives. Um, to their credit, the Liberals have at last, and they are the only party to do this, committed to establish a toll-free accessible phone number where we can call to report AODA violations. We've been asking for that for years. And also, to the Liberals' credit, uh, they have committed to make public an action plan on enforcement. They've been promising that for several months. And they have promised that they will make an annual report to the public on, uh, on uh, how they're doing in enforcement and how compliance is going. Uh, this is a step forward for us because over the past year, it took us 10 months of freedom of information request, bad media and questions in the, in the legislature to get the Liberals to answer any questions about 
how they were doing in enforcement. Now at least we've got a promise that we don't have to go through those hoops to get those kind of answers. Um, in brief, referring to the other areas uh, that we've addressed, on elections accessibility, New Democrats promise to pass legislation similar to amendments they tried to pass in 2010 that would focus on telephone internet voting and certain other measures, amendments that the Liberal government defeated. Uh, they said they'd address the substance of those amendments. The Liberals made a promise simply to uh, work on accessibility of elections, no details. The PCs acknowledge the importance of addressing barriers in elections, but don't specify what they would do about it. In terms of the review of all legislation for accessibility barriers, the New Democrats say that they would speed up the review that's going on now. Um, the Liberals make more vague commitments uh, about the action they've taken so far and say they're going to continue uh, moving forward. I recommend that anyone read the actual letters uh, that are on our website. I'm just trying to summarize them. Um, in terms of reforming the Ontario Public Service and how it delivers accessibility, the New Democrats promise a new minister responsible for all accessibility issues. Um, the Liberals are, uh, offer much less in this area and the, uh, the PCs uh, not at all. The PCs generally say that they look forward to meeting with us if elected and to discussing with us ways uh, to improve the, uh, the implementation and enforcement of the Disabilities Act. And we, we would welcome the opportunity to work with any government, but they don't uh, uh, um, go beyond that to specify the uh, action they would take. In terms of new accessibility standards, um, the New Democrats effectively make the two commitments we seek. They agree that they would develop new standards in the areas of education, um, health care, um, and, and in the area of housing. And they also said that you know, if elected, they would identify all the standards that need to be made to get us to the goal of full accessibility by 2025. That's what the Act requires. The Liberals, who we've been pressing for years to move on this, say that they will make a standard that will deal with education and or health care, but they don't specify when they'll decide, whether it will be both, or whether it may just be uh, one. Um, the Liberals also raise a new bureaucratic barrier of saying that they want to review with the applicable ministries, education, healthcare, colleges, and universities, to determine what the standard might address before they decide if they're going to have a standard developed at all. That's not the way the Disabilities Act is designed. The government's supposed to decide we need a new standard in education or healthcare, give it to a body, an independent arm's length body to come up with recommendations, take the recommendations back, and then decide what they're going to do. Government is slowing things down by creating new uh, bureaucratic barriers. So, what do we do about it? Well, let's get to the strategy that we propose to unleash. I again repeat what we say often, which is that we are nonpartisan. We do not try to elect or defeat any party. And by providing a comparison of what they've promised, we're not suggesting to anyone how they should vote. Rather, we're simply telling the facts as we, uh, as we see them. However, our nonpartisan strategy for this election now has really two parts. First, we want to ensure that the gains we've made are not at risk no matter who was elected. And to that end, we will be calling on voters with disabilities and voters without disabilities to urge uh, the Progressive Conservative Party, the candidates in their writings, and Mr. Hudak in the lead, to make a clear, unequivocal, absolute commitment that they will not cut regulations or other gains uh, on disability accessibility that we have made to date. Um, and that is very important for us uh, to have that. We would like whoever is elected next for our gains not to be at risk. The second thing we want to do is we're calling on voters with disabilities and voters without disabilities together to start a new grassroots effort, building support for accessibility one riding at a time, one candidate at a time, all parties at the same time. See, what we've come to conclude is simply this. We have a problem, those of us who advocate for accessibility. In 2005, there was great excitement in the legislature when the Disabilities Act passed. But it's been nine years since then. Many of the cabinet ministers, many of the backbenchers, many of the opposition members 
who were involved in the struggle for this legislation have since left public life. And there are a number of new members of the legislature, new political staff, all sincere and genuine dedicated people. They disagree on policy, but they all tend to promote, say that they're supportive on accessibility. But they don't, they don't yet know enough about this, and they have not yet uh, uh, taken it on as an issue that should be important in all cases uh, to make sure that we make progress. Because the parties in their platforms are not offering us enough to ensure that we reach our goal of full accessibility by 2025, because the leaders are not leading sufficiently, it's time, we believe, for the backbenches to lead the leaders. So we are calling on our supporters around the province to go to all candidates' debates, go to campaign activities, we don't care what party it is, we urge it for all parties, and try to get individual candidates to subscribe to the eight commitments we're seeking. Try to get them to agree that our gains shouldn't be lost, that we should get new standards in all the areas we need, and that the law should be effectively enforced now. We want them to then pressure their own party to be more supportive than the uh, letters that we've gained from their parties have been. Now, we don't question anyone's good faith. The parties all say they're supportive on accessibility, and we appreciate that. But we measure progress by the concrete action that's proposed. And while the parties' letters to us do offer some helpful steps, they are the least ambitious commitments we have seen since 2003 in election commitments, and we need more. Let me conclude by reminding you that available at www.aodaalliance.org are all the resources to know about this entire issue, the promises in this election and the past elections, our analysis of them, um, and so on, and a, and a summary of the records of the parties. If you email us at aodafeedback at gmail.com, we are more than happy to provide an interview or just provide background information. If you're watching this and you're not involved with the media and you just want to get involved, just send us an email to aodafeedback at gmail.com and, and ask to be put on our email update list. We'll let you know what's going on. We'll provide you tools on how to uh, get more involved in the election and raise these issues. Follow us on Twitter, at AODA Alliance. We tweet about accessibility issues here and around the world. We've tweeted every candidate from all three of the major parties that has a Twitter handle. And we've gotten responses from a number of them. We've got a number of them that commit that they won't go to an inaccessible all-candidates debate. That would be a nice change. Um, and so on. So we would like to use this opportunity to invite the media to cover this issue and the public to get as involved as possible. Let me conclude by reminding you where I am sitting as I speak to you. This is the Inclusive Design Re uh, Research Center. Ontario is trying to grow the sector of our economy that deals with information technology. We want to be a world leader. We want to break into international markets of this area. But right now we are lagging way behind. And one of the reasons we're lagging way behind is that we don't have a strong enough capacity to create information technology that everybody can use. Young people as well as seniors, sighted people as well as blind people, people with two hands as well as people who can't use either hands, people who can hear as well as people who can't hear very well or who can't hear at all, people with learning challenges, uh, people with intellectual disabilities, and so on. And this center where I'm speaking is a tremendous source of expertise. But what we need is we need the government, under whatever party is elected, to show the kind of leadership so that our public and private sectors will tap in more effectively into this wonderful center. Some already have, but not enough. Tap into the expertise we have in Ontario so we can build a more inclusive society here and we can develop an international capacity to sell our products abroad where there's a growing hunger for accessible products around the world. I thank you for logging on to take part in our first virtual news conference. We hope it's successful and we welcome the opportunity to answer your questions and to provide you with more information.